Now to Imo State, where Governor Emeka Ihedeham Friday inaugurated new nine judges in the state with the resolve of his administration to uphold the independence of the judiciary and the rule of law. According to a press release issued by his chief press secretary, Chibike Onyoku, seven of the judges were sworn, sworn in will be assigned to the state high court, while two others will be assigned to the customary court of appeal. Ihedeoha, while speaking at the ceremony, identified an independent judiciary and adherence to the rule of law as the only means to good governance. He further noted that the three arms of government must collaborate for good governance to thrive in the state. The governor added that the appointment of magistrates, inspectors of court, bailiffs and other judicial staff upon his assumption of office was done to ensure an effective justice delivery system in the state. A long time in Nigeria's history, the education sector in an election year did witness a disruptive quake at the federal level as a result of change in leadership. With a capital expenditure of 48 billion naira for the Ministry of Education in the 2020 appropriation budget and 112 billion naira for the Universal Basic Education UBEC signed by President Mohamed Buhari, government and key stakeholders continue to pay lip service to the sector, with observers playing the blame game, blame game rather. Now joining me in the studio uh, this hour to discuss about this is an education, educationist, Mary Ohagwasi. Good afternoon, Amaka. And thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Uh, okay, now for us an, an educationist who's got a vast experience in the you know education sector, how would you assess our education sector? What do you make of it? I would say that uh, our education sector have not been given enough priority. I don't think it's the it's the focus of the a government of the day. It's not because the the way you will know when something is important is the place or the allocation of money in the budget mm. meant for it. We don't have up to ten percent of the budget on education. Mm. Focus more is on on insecurity, on the economy, and corruption. But sincerely, if we don't make education the center, you know what is crying will continue to cry. Mm. Do you understand? We want to fix our nation, fix our education. I keep saying it. We can't, we can't, we can't progress meaningfully. We can't develop meaningfully without addressing the issue of education. You can imagine a country where over 10 million children are out of school. It's a state of emergency, and nobody is calling it. At this time, I think our nation should be able to cause state of emergency. Enough of talking. Something must be done. Go to this uh, northeast. Most children are out of because of insecurity. So we should address the issue of education mm -hmm. and look at it from the roots. Why are our children not doing well in public exams? Why are we having exam map practices? Why are we having poor habits of reading? Why is our 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 institutions, our our lecturers, you know, going into academic corruption, collecting money for grades and sets for grade? Why is it so? Are there no bodies to monitor and evaluate what is going on in these sectors? Then how much are we funding our basic education? I mean primary and, edu and secondary school. How much are we funding these bodies? And let me tell us, we have more children in the public schools than we have in the private schools. Mm. And this is one country in the world that uh, public school, uh, private schools are an alternative to public school. It should not be. It is not a privilege. Education is not a privilege. Mm. It is a right of every citizen. And even if you're an adult, there should be a working adult education, like distant learning and open education. People should have access to quality education if you want to have a meaningful development. Mm -hmm. So as it were, as our nation, we have never come to a time that we are very serious with our education, and it shows, it shows. And then you look at it, our education, is it globally competitive? Is it, is it attractive to the outside world? How many people can say, let me go to university in Nigeria? Mm. People go to university in Togo, just Togo here, and, and Ghana, and Kenya, and South Africa, then the Europe, then South Africa, I mean, America, then, and Canada. How many people are coming into Nigeria? So, oh, let me go and school in Nigeria. 
countries are making money. Like Britain make a lot of money from foreign students. That's correct. How many people are coming? In? Do you know how many number of people coming here? Because why would they come in? When we spend five months on incessant uh, industrial Strike. action, half of the year the students are at home. They were coming back, they were rushed. What type of graduate do you think we are producing? Then they quickly read up something and scribble up something and they're giving a certificate. How credible are those certificates? You have actually responded to my second question. <laughs> Thank uh, you. So now we'll move to the final question, which is, yes, you've made, uh, you've listed all of this problem. What is the way forward? Yes, I, I think it's time for government to set agenda, mm -hmm. right agenda for education. It's time to call the stakeholders. Let's sit down on the table and bring the burning issues. And let's look at how do we bring lasting solution. One sector I will tell you that you cannot politicize is education. Mm -hmm. And you don't, a matter of and spending four years, eight years in government, is something that you give us a lasting legacy. You don't just say, because I'm here now, this is a policy, somebody has come, it comes with a new one. We should look at it futuristically. What will happen in the 20, 30 years to come? Mm -hmm. Let us put it down. And let's begin to work at it step by step. Um, that is one. All right. <laughs> we'll continue. Still on education, knowing the importance of education, it is the wish of every parent to give his or her children the best of education, even when it is, its affordability is not within their reach. Now, parents go extra mile to give their children good education. But for parents who cannot afford quality education for their children, they do with what they could afford for them. As schools set for resumption across the country after long Christmas and New Year vacation, parents are wo and words are already shopping and trying to meet the needs of their children. And I still have with me Mary, uh, again, education is uh, Ohagwasi, to talk now as a parent. I know you're a teacher and as a parent. Now, um, what should parents be doing at this time in preparation for school resumption, which would happen next week? Exactly. Well, number one is to prepare them that they're going back to school, prepare their minds mm. and then gradually make them to go back to adjust to the routine. There's a routine. Some of them sleep very late and wake mm. up very late. Now they have to go back to sleep earlier and wake, wake up, up earlier mm -hmm. because they're going to start school. Mm -hmm. Then start shopping for you know, school supplies. A child should not be going to school. You don't have pencil, you don't have eraser, you don't have, you know the things a child needs to go back to school based on the class the child is. Mm -hmm. And they get the uniforms ready. Get the child mind ready, get the uniform ready, get provisions ready, mm -hmm. and most importantly, provide for the school fees. Mm. It should not come last. That's the core of it. Yes, that's the core of it. Okay, now that's a, you know, parents are doing, trying to get their children ready and get, getting into school. Now, what should parents also expect from the school, the teachers, you know, those who will be impacting on the children at the beginning of uh, another academic session? Sincerely, they are expecting value. Mm. Uh, we know how things are, are difficult now. We're, we're having an economic meltdown. Uh, parents will not want to spend that kind of money, especially those in private schools, mm -hmm. and don't get value. Parents will want to have a holistic value. A, ch a child should be touched all around going to school, physically, emotionally, cognitively, socially. Mm -hmm. A child's needs must be met going to school. So I believe parents are expecting value and then security of their children. The children should be secure. They should be in good hands mm -hmm. where they are at work. Mm -hmm. they should, they, their mind should be at peace that I've given my child to you know, reasonable adults to manage. Mm -hmm. Finally, you talked about education, quality, and all of that. There are parents who, at this time, you know, the beginning of the session, they are worried because you're thinking of the school fees, and again, you're thinking of the quality of uh, the education, what they get, you know, vis-a-vis -vis what they pay. This time, how, you know, there are parents who are struggling. What, what's the way forward? For the way forward, parents? find your level. You don't, go and, you don't go and borrow money to pay school fees. You should be able to put your children where you can afford. And then if there are gaps, make it up at home. If, if it means you give the child personal attention, give the child personal attention. Or tutorials. Tutorials. Well. Don't do what you cannot. For instance, how can you be borrowing money from people every three months? It doesn't look tidy. So you should put your children where you can afford. Some of, some of, some of our parents have lost their jobs. Mm. Then you, your children are in a very exorbitant school. You don't go there and, and be a nuisance. We do your child and put your child. You can, it's possible the child can even go to public school. There are children in public school, they are, they are doing well. Mm. In fact, if you check these external exams, most of the children that come up tops are from public school. So what are we talking about? So what I'm saying is that make it up at home.
Mm. You mustn't put your children in a very exorbitant school. So parents should not have high blood pressure because the children are going back to school. Mm. And another thing is planning. This is festive period. People have spent so much money doing festivity. Do they remember their children's school fees? School is not free and it's not cheap. Mm. It's not. All right. Thank you so very it's much, uh, Mary Ohagwase, for always coming and sharing your thoughts. Thank there. you so much.